Hey everyone, so it's been three weeks since I last uploaded. The main reason for this is that I've been waiting on deliveries for the two main projects that I'm currently working on. And outside of those projects, I've just been like completely creatively stumped. But as you can see from the mountain of boxes in front of me, a lot of stuff has finally arrived. So I thought that I'd open all these parcels on camera and just see where this video takes me. But first, let's remove this Activate Windows 10 watermark thanks to this video sponsor, SCD Key. If you use the link in the description down below and you enter the discount code TPC at checkout, you'll save yourself an additional 15% off an OEM Windows 10 key. The key is delivered immediately and then you can just search for Activate on your PC and input the code there. And the watermark is gone. Now back to the video, starting with this parcel, which you can see contains an NZXT H1. So I'm actually going to wait to unbox this until it's own video because it's one of the big projects that I'm currently working on. So the first parcel that I'm actually going to open is this one. Because of its shape, I'm pretty sure that this is the white acrylic that I ordered for my game PC Orchid, which is what most of the parcels will be for. I ended up ordering some pieces to be cut to size because it worked out cheaper than buying a large piece and then cutting it down myself. And then also because I was ordering from this store anyway, I also got in, in all different colours, some samples as well as a big piece of plastic to try out filming B-Row on. So the first piece of white acrylic is to tidy up the front area of the case. This will be covered mostly by the radiation fans, but it should still look cleaner with this here. These pieces of acrylic are looking very rough, but hopefully once the protective film is removed, they'll look all clean and shiny. The next piece is to clean up the floor, which is quite messy from where Corsair uses this frame for other cases, which have hard drive cages here. I measured this to be smaller than the area actually is, because I thought it might look odd coming further forward than the power supply shroud does. I think I'll have this push right up against the back piece of acrylic, which looks pretty good. Lastly, for the build, there's this one, which I'm just going to sit on top of the power supply for now, but when it comes, I plan to actually stick it to the inside of the power supply shroud so that you can see the white accenting poking through the grill. Then with the colours, I got a nice big piece of sour grape frost, which should be great for filming little things on, like keycaps and fittings and such, followed by samples of Parma violet frost, candy floss blue frost, and candy pearlescent. And I haven't done a very good job of capturing it, but they're all kind of sparkly, especially the pearlescent. I think my favourite though is the purple palmer violet frost. I like to get like a huge circle of it to sit on top of my turntable to neaten that up for my spinning shots. So another parcel literally just arrived, which is why it wasn't in a, the box shot at the beginning. But this parcel is from Overclockers UK, which means inside the box is my new Intel i9-10900K, which is very exciting and should be a huge upgrade over my Ryzen 1700. I bought this because it's the best gaming CPU on the planet right now. That's all there is to it. For the vast majority of people, AMD is the way to go, but I just wanted whichever CPU is topping the game benchmarks right now. AMD hasn't had the high-end game performance crown in the entire time that I've been into PCs, which is Sandy Bridge onwards, and I would absolutely love AMD to take that crown for a generation, and for then for it to seesaw back and forward between Intel and AMD each gen, because obviously competition is good for everyone, but for now, especially as this build is going to be water-cooled, and I want to put that cooling to good use, for me, the 10900K is the way to go. Also, in the overclockers box, there were some Bits Power Silver water cooling blanks, and I plan to use these to replace some of the black plastic ones that Corsair use. So, on to parcel number four, in which is my new motherboard for Orchid, a Z490 Aorus Master. I've been loving the X570 Aorus Master in my workstation, so I thought that I'd try out its blue team cousin. This board looks absolutely stunning, and it's easily the nicest board I've ever had from Gigabyte, but with everything being black, silver, and grey. The VRM heat pad does stand out quite a bit, which is not something you usually see. At least you know they're taking cooling seriously, I guess. <laughs> um, which you can also tell by the finned heatsink design. In the next parcel is my new memory. I went with 32GB of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. This is 36,000MHz CL18. This is the white variant, which should look absolutely amazing, especially if I go with some pink and blue lighting. That could look nice. <laughs> I haven't really decided yet which direction I want to go in with the lighting, 
all I know is that I want the physical colours to mostly be black and white with some little like silver and grey accents. And this should result in a build that not only looks themed as it is, but I can also take it in any direction with the RGB and it looked good. Like I could just whack all the lights to pink or to blue and it, and it, it matched, it looked good still. But before I install this memory, I moved the CPU water block across from the old board to the new one. And with the memory installed, it does look just as pretty as I thought it would. And then in this parcel is my new SSD. I've gone with a one terabyte Corsair MP600. This is a bit of a controversial decision because this is a PCIe 4.0 SSD with read speeds around 5 gigabytes per second, but the 10900K doesn't have support for PCIe 4.0. This is the weakest part of 10th generation Intel, in my opinion. However, PCIe 4.0 is expected to be included with 11th gen Intel CPUs, which should be compatible with this socket and this motherboard. So for now, I am going to bottleneck down to PCIe 3.0 speeds, but if I upgrade the CPU somewhere down the road, and I probably will, because you know it's my job to play with hardware, then I should be able to unlock that extra performance. In terms of pricing, at least within Corsair's lineup, a PCIe 4.0 drive is 33% more money than a similar PCIe 3.0 drive. So for most of you watching, this will not make no sense for you to do, and you should just save the money, but for me, I know that this drive will spend most of its life in a PCIe 4.0 slot, even if right now it's being held back. So with it installed, the build does look a little odd with some of the cover missing, but I think that once the GPU's in front of it, it will turn out okay. Especially as like the heatsink will match the fins on the GPU block and it also has white writing which adds to like the black and white theme, but yeah. <laughs> so whilst I was filming, two more parcels arrived. First, can anybody guess what this is? It's a complete mystery. <laughs> it's my new air compressor, which I bought to be able to paint things with. This is also the first time I've ever had something arrive on a palette, which is just exciting all in itself. Like. <laughs> but shopping for a compressor is really frustrating because they've taken words like quiet and silent and completely ignored what they mean. <laughs> like the one I went for is part of ABAC's silent range, which according to the sticker on it means that it's 85 decibels. <laughs> which, yes, is way more quiet than the standard 97 decibel compressors but I don't think you should be able to use the word silent on anything that makes noise, let alone something that makes 85 decibels of noise. Um, another frustrating thing is that in the UK, we don't have anywhere near the selection of compressors that other countries do. Maybe air tools just aren't as common here, or so, I don't know, but anyway, this should do the job for everything I need it to do out here in the garage. So the second new parcel to just arrive is some Gorilla Heavy Duty mounting tape, which I wanted to use to install the plastic within Orchid. It says that you're supposed to fit the tape vertically, so for the front piece of plastic, I just stuck in four strips, and that seemed to do the job just fine. With the second piece of plastic, I noticed that it actually balances on the screws in the floor, rather than sitting flat on the floor itself. So I decided to steal a tactic from EVGA, and I double stacked the mounting tape like they do with their thermal pads, and they seemed to work just fine. The last piece of plastic was slightly too big, it overlaps the power supply shroud's grommet, which would be a problem as it would stop it from sitting flat, and it's also longer than the power supply shroud is deep. So I measured it and I worked out that I needed to cut down 1cm off one side and 1.5cm off another side. So I marked along the plastic and then I tried my best to cut the excess off. I decided against the score and snap technique because the cut is too small to get good force on, I also decided against the Dremel because I thought it would take forever and the plastic might melt, so in the end I went with my jigsaw. But I didn't have the right type of blade for it, all I have was wood blades, but I figured that as you won't see the edges once it's in the build, it'll be fine, so I just went for it. Which ended as badly as you'd expect. My desk moved about as I was cutting and the finish was horrible and just thankfully you won't see the edges once it's in the build. <laughs> But yeah, so I just stuck this in with some electrical tape, and I think it looks good. So this is how the case looks now, and I really like it. Although I've literally just realised that I'm going to need to drill holes in that front piece of acrylic to be able to run the front fan's cables through for good cable management. I don't want them running along the plastic, that seems horrid. And this is how the build looks with the new loaded up motherboard in it. 
The boot is actually starting to come together. The board looks amazing, as does the memory and SSD. I really can't wait to get this finished now. So there are four more parcels left to go. I wanted to open the big one from Corsair next. This contains an XR5 360mm radiator, which is going in the front of my build, an XR5 240mm radiator, which is going in the roof, and then I've got a bunch of fittings with some compressions, 45 degree and 90 degree adapters. I also have 3 meters of XT softline tubing. In the next box are some YLL120 fans which is actually extremely disappointing because I wanted to go with the QL120 fans. The QLs have lighting on both sides and the lighting can actually be seen as side on because the lighting is part of the fan frame. I was really excited to try them out because they look like the ultimate white RGB fans. In the next box is a Commander Pro, which is very odd because the case already has one of those included. Perhaps this is instead of the Lighting Node Pro that's in my IQ plan? I'll have to ask Corsair. And in the last parcel is one of those bottles you used to fill your loop, which is great because these make filling your loop really easy, but it's also kind of funny for just that to be shipped in its own box. So yeah, this is where I'm at now in the process of water cooling orchid. I still need a few parts like coolant and I'm hoping I can track down some QL120 fans, but in the next video I'm going to dive into actually water cooling her. I can't promise that I'll finish the build in that part though, because this is turning out to be a pretty long process, but I'll try my best. <laughs> so if you like this video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and you want to see more of my videos, like the next part. Um, thank you so, so much to my incredible patrons, and thank you for watching, and stay safe.